Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and in today's video we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to build the N1 moon rocket. The tutorial we are going to be building the bottom three stages that get it into orbit, and then the uh, spacecraft which gets it to the moon and land on the moon and all the fun stuff and the Soyuz and the landing, and it's, all, it's going to be amazing. So let's get straight into the vehicle assembly building. Alright, so uh, to start off our build we are going to grab the P re-entry module to construct our Soyuz uh, mod Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, the Soyuz is uh, split into three parts, a orbit module, a descent module, and a service module. We're currently building the orbit module, uh, which will separate from the descent module uh, on, uh, on re-entry. So we're going to put a little decoupler on right there. And then we're also going to be putting a, uh, a main uh, descent module here. Um, important thing to note, since the first part you put down was the, uh, the orbit module, uh, it is the root part of the craft and also the part that determines which direction. Uh, it's, your, it's your control point, so you want to make sure you reverse the control point because you can see the thing is flipped over. Uh, if you don't reverse it, then your rocket will be, your, your nav ball will be inverted. So uh, just a quick little thing to let you know there. Uh, now I'm going to be putting a nice little Sepatron on the bottom of our descent module because in the real Soyuz they have a little, they actually have six little engines, we're just doing one just for simplicity's sake, uh, and they would be really overpowered if you had six. Um, six of them, six little retro rockets that fire just just like half a second before touching the ground to just slow the rocket down, or the uh, spacecraft down just a little bit before it, uh, it touches the ground. Um, and if you weren't aware, uh, it's pretty obvious, but the DLCs are required for this build. We are using a ton of stuff from the Making History DLC. I believe it's just Making History that's required, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely need the Making History DLC. We are using 5 meter parts and Russian stuff, and all the Making History is required. So, um, also, go yeah, so that's that's that. Um, now we're going to be building um, the Descent Module, which is because the Descent Module is kind of flat on the bottom. It's kind of like a cone-ish, not cone shape, but it's like round at the top and then kind of flat. So um, we're putting some radiators to kind of give the shape. Uh, and then at one point, it's M5 meter uh, heat shield on the bottom of that. So now we go ahead and make a decoupler. And going to put the service module. And we have a convenient little part that is basically a Soyuz service module from the Making History DLC. And we're just going to go ahead and fill that up with, with some fuel and some reaction wheels and some batteries and all the fun stuff that will uh, give it give it power and crap. So uh, the Soyuz uh, gets the craft from a low moon orbit uh, back to uh, back to uh, Earth or Kerbin in this in this situation. So that's what we need enough fuel. We need around 300, 350 meter, 300 to 350 meters a second of delta V around. So we have plenty of fuel to get back to Kerbin. Uh, you know, actually, fun thing, I believe this is the longest video on my channel. Um, longest Kerbal Space Program video, rather. I used to do uh, really long videos. But my longest, uh, not excluding the live stream, but I think it's my longest KSP video. I don't know, this is like almost 30 minutes long. So, you know, and one's a pretty complicated crap. This thing took a long time to build. And I did two, two runs of this. Um, first time was 40 minutes, and then I did it again, and it took me 30 minutes to build it. And I don't know, I feel like if I kept doing it, I'd be there all day and end up shaving, getting it down to maybe 25 minutes. But yeah, it's... It's pretty tricky uh, to get to build this thing pretty quick because you know I'm trying to trying to I try to go pretty quick in this thing to uh, um, for your viewing pleasure, but it's also kind of difficult because I don't know if I'm supposed to go too fast. If I go too fast, then it might be hard to follow. If I go too slow, then it'll just be boring. So I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, you can let me know on my Discord server, plugs and links and stuff, and help my guys smash the subscribe button, hit the join button, and uh, OMG. YOLO swag, fidget spinner, put a engine plate down and put an engine below it. Um, <laughs> sorry if I kind of skipped over what I was doing um, for the last few minutes um, and did, did my did my epic plugs. Uh, I don't think any. I already kind of explained what we're doing. It was, it's not that complicated. You're just putting some fuel tanks and stuff in. So uh, now we can begin construction of the LK or lunar craft, which is the lander. It can only fit one person, which is, you know, yeah. Also, don't forget the parachutes. Those are pretty important. There's only one on the real thing, but uh, for the retro rocket to work, the thing kind of has to not be pointed sideways, so hey-ho. Um, docking port there, and landing craft. The construction will co commence epic, epicness. I also forgot to put the solar panels on the Soyuz. I go, uh, yeah, just put solar panels on. I go back at the end of the tutorial because I realized I forgot to, but solar panels, important. So now we're going to be in the lander craft, going to get the 1.875 meter adapter there, and get another one, flip it over. And that's going to be the main body of the craft. Uh, the uh, LK, unlike the Apollo, is one stage. Well, it's like one and a half stages. Um, 
uses one engine the entire way up and down, but it, all, it has some detachable fuel tanks and stuff. So when you get a thud engine connecting, that kind of looks about right and has a good thrust. It doesn't have a great specific impulse, but you know, you can use you can use a different engine if you want, but I kind of thought that the thud was the best engine. So now when you get the rotate tool and get it rotated uh, to the best way. Uh, if you find that uh, when you're rotating and moving stuff around, it can't move any further, like you get to the limit as far as you can move it, um, hold shift down, that allows you to move, move these parts a little bit further. So if you can't quite offset them as much as I can, um, just hold shift down at um that helps and don't forget to auto shred everything and rigid attach not uh, rigid attach most things don't rigid attach fairings you really don't have to rigid attach anything but i kind of do it out of a force of habit uh if you don't know how to get auto shred rigid attachment you have to go to um go to the settings menu and then go to something setting called advanced tweakables and you want to enable that so uh, now we're going to be in construction of the fuel tanks uh the external the the, the attachable fuel tanks so we're going to get a small little um a small little uh, whatever octagonal strut thingy and then some decouplers some of the small uh, 0.6 meter uh, decouplers and you're going to get some of those fuel tanks on it like so and you want to make sure the decoupler isn't totally clipped into the uh, the lander or the main core of it because you know then, then it'll be cracking attacks but you want to make sure it's kind of as close as possible because it will or else it'll look look kind of weird so uh, after these are the main four fuel tanks and you also want to make sure you have cross feed enabled on the decoupler uh, what that will do is it allow fuel to go through the uh, through the fuel tank so you won't have to add a fuel line so now it's going to be adding some um, some structural panels just to uh, just to connect the uh, the sides of the uh, of the oh my nose man i got the i got the viruses um uh just because they're the, the actual thing it all is all kind of one uniform structure the um <laughs> The, the the extra these these fuel tank here this fuel tank was definitely one of the more difficult parts to get right because in the the real thing it, it is kind of small um, and it's hard to get right because this KSP and everything is massive in KSP to be honest the parts are pretty big so this is kind of the best design I go with I have some other things you'll see in a second that definitely that make it a little bit a little bit better I do some Sovietization to it I don't know if that's a that's definitely not a word but I don't know if that even makes any sense you'll see you'll see what I mean in a second so it's going to be adding a few more layers here just to kind of fill in the gaps. Uh, and then uh, don't forget to auto shred. You really don't have to auto shred the parts that are that small, but you know, I just, you know, why not? Why not? I guess it takes some time, but. <laughs> um, and there I am just making sure crossfeed is enabled. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some landing wings out. I get the micro landing struts and uh, you have to make sure that they're not angled a little bit like mine were angled. I do believe I noticed that hopefully because you can kind of see, yeah, so I go in the rotate and just rotate it just a little bit, make sure they're perfectly straight up. And now we can get to the Sovietization or the Russianization of the uh, of the lander. So we're just going to go to science. I'm just going to start just plopping down random crap um, just, just to make it look kind of messy and, you know, Russian because... Yeah, all these, all the Soviet <laughs> rockets were just a mess. They were like stuff random, stuff's everywhere, stuff is just uh, Russian. It's a mess, you know? Russian. They can figure it out, so yeah, that, I think that kind of ad made it look a little more realistic, to be honest. Def definitely adds a little bit of texture to it, I guess, <laughs> if nothing else. So just, just gonna add a few more things, and that is gonna be the completion of the LK. Also, don't forget to put a reaction wheel or some RCS fuel, which I don't believe I showed on screen. I do show it in a little second, a little second in a second, uh, because it has no way of controlling itself uh, if you don't do that. So I, I believe I do clip a uh, a reaction wheel into the LK in just a minute or two. Um, when I remember that there's no way to control it. Actually, I think it's in a few minutes, but reaction wheel, put it in. Now, it is time to construct block D, uh, or the fairing first, uh, and then block D. So, uh, block D is the, uh, is the stage that does the orbital insertion around the moon. So, block G goes from uh, low Earth orbit to uh, on a translunar injection, so flying out to the moon. And then, block D uh, will circularize the craft around the moon. And then obviously the lander does the landing and you know so now it's time for block d so block d is basically just a little circle your circular fuel tank so i'm going to be making a mm, kind of circular fuel tank uh you know it, it, it works it kind of works <laughs> uh, i feel like like disclaimer here this is not like the best n1 ever there are people who i have seen like people on my discord have shown me and just on reddit and stuff yeah, there have been other people who made much, much better Soyuzes than this, but, like, this is a tutorial. Like, you know, I could, like, some of the Soyuz, that, Soyuz or N1s that people have made have been insane, and they've worked on it for, like, weeks and stuff. 
like this is a this is like a 30 minute tutorial on how to make an one. like you know this is this is for like i wouldn't say like beginners to the game but people who aren't like all crazy into that building stuff i'm not even into that like it would take me forever to build one of those crap so you know yeah, people say like, oh my, your N1 sucks. Like, you know, this is this is this is an intentionally not super advanced N1. You know, it's it, it like it'll look pretty good, I think. But disclaimer. Um, so now it's gonna add some struts to kind of add the uh, the support beams and stuff for the uh, for block D. So that's block D done. Uh, make sure it has enough delta V. It only needs like 350. It has like 700, so that's not a problem at all. Now we can go ahead and construct a block G, which is the translunar injection stage, and it's going to go ahead and put a cheetah engine on that. And it's pretty simple, just a fuel tank, and then just I, I, I clip it in a little bit, uh, just because you know why the crap not, and then auto strutting and all that fun stuff. So that is basically everything except for the fairing done on the. Well, that's the entire spacecraft stuff. I, that yeah. So now we have to make the launch vehicle. There I am just going ahead and putting that reaction wheel in because I finally remembered. Um, so yeah, so now the next thing after the reaction wheel is going to be the fairing, uh, which is going to encapsulate the entire spacecraft. So block D, block G, and the lander craft, and the Soyuz. A lot of spacecraft, a lot of, a lot of stages and stuff, a lot, of, a lot of moving parts going around on the N1. So now it is time to do the fairing uh, after I get the launch escape system on because that's generally a good thing. No, it's kind of amazing. They actually put a launch cape system on Soviet craft. What? 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 Craziness. That's not very Russian. Yeah, the problem. You just jump out, <laughs> um, or or you just you just you just take it take it like a man. You know, drink some vodka. Uh, so yeah. So now just doing the um, fairing. You want to have it go straight up and then till the mid about halfway up the uh, LK, and then you want to kind of curve it in a little bit, and then the Soyuz. Curve it up in inward, and then once it gets about halfway up the Soyuz, you want to have it go straight up, and then right at the top of the Soyuz, you want it to go kind of steep, angled up, and then uh, you know connect with the uh, connect with the launch escape tower. So there I am, just doing a few different designs, experimenting, trying to get it to look nice and perfect. I can spend forever on fairings. I spend way too long messing around with fairings. But there we go. That's the fairing. Then we're gonna go ahead and set, get the sides down to two, ejection force all the way up, and clamshell deploy on. So. That is the spacecraft completed, and now it is time for the launch vehicle. This is the this is the part, the really wide, weird N1. This is you know, it's the, the famous N1 shape. Is this is this thing? So um, I don't know if other people make this mistake, um, but I I most certainly make this mistake uh, a lot when making my N1s. My first N1. This is very obvious. If you go look at the first N1 video I did, it was the N1 versus Saturn V. Was the first video where I actually showed an N1 that I made. And I, I made the, uh, the the stages way too wide. Like, you know, they kind of cone out a little bit, they get wider. I made mine way, way too wide. So they are less wide than you think they are. At least for me, that was something that applied to me. I, I thought they were way wider than they are. They do not get very wide at all. They like they stay very similar in shape. Um, they do, you know, they do widen out a bit, but like not a lot. So keep that in mind. As you could see when I made my fairing, it was not, you know, barely, it got wider, but not that much. So. Uh, this is block V, by the way. This is the uh, stage. This is the stage that will get it into orbit. It is a three-stage to orbit vehicle, the N1. So I just put four poodle engines on uh, block V there um, because poodles are great. You know, we like poodiles, pooters. So yeah, that is the uh, that is block V done. Uh, and now we're gonna go ahead and do block B, which is the second stage of a vehicle. Vehicle, it's a stage. Uh, after we do some I beams, which we're gonna use I beams as the, the little. Uh, little beam things that connect the stages because uh inner stages are for plebs we just have beams and I mean, that's what they really did you know soviets man pretty nuts <laughs> pretty pretty nuts i mean realistically speaking you know you don't need them to be too structured sound like you know from a physics standpoint you know because they, they kind of held together like if you know if you know model rockets um, a lot of people when they make their model, I don't know why, I'm, this is a tutorial on how to use KFP, you, you know, you can see what I'm doing, I feel like it's hard to, you know, like, oh, one tip here, one thing to note, do not make, make sure the, uh, the I-beams do not clip into the, uh, fairing of the stage above it at any point, because if you do that, then they will be clipped when you separate, when they separate, then it'll be clipped, and there'll be a cracking attack, so, that, um, but, other weird tangent thing, now I'm making the second stage, uh, the second stage you want to be, uh, like, one and a half, one and a third, one and a third to one and a half times bigger than the uh, the third stage. 
that's not very precise, but you know, just just look at like I'd recommend having a picture of the N1 up while you're also building this, even even if you're following along with the tutorial. Which if you are, you know, thank you. Glad glad you think my tutorial is worthy of following along with. But uh, you know, do that just just so you can kind of get a feel for it. Like you know, if you want to follow my tutorial, is great. But you know, do what do what you think looks best. You know, that's kind of my motto. But back to model rockets. You know, very on topic discussion. Uh, if you like model rockets, people build model rockets and they have like a two-stage rocket. They usually have the second stage like not even structurally attached at all to the bottom stage. Just kind of like drop it in. They have a little bit, it's a little bit less wide so it just kind of falls into the first stage. And then, um, you know, because the thrust below it will keep it, keep it, will push it in, you know, physics, right? And then when it separates, you know, you know, you know that, that's kind of the theory behind that. So, and I'm just going to put some fuel tanks in. You can put as much fuel tank as I want. You can put as little as you want. Um, we do end up draining some fuel just for realism's sake, so we're also thinking it'll basically be like an SSTO. It'll be in, it'll get to orbit in two stages and get to three stages. Like, because Kerbin is so small, three stage rockets are kind of impractical. Like, re two stages is really all you need. So, uh, there we go. It's doing a five meter engine plate there, and I'm going to do eight of the skiff engines uh, to represent the second stage ends, which are uh, NK 15s, and there are eight of them. So that is the second stage, that is block B, basically completed. Now we can go on to block v A, I was going to say V, but it's actually A, the bottom stage, the big, chunky, most powerful rocket stage of all time. Unbeaten record, it is, <laughs> it is pretty crazy. I think uh, Super Heavy may beat it, though, uh, when, it's get, when it gets built, so I don't know, we'll see. I just realized we're like halfway through the video and we're already on the bottom stage, you know. There's, there's a lot of tinkering we have to do a little bit later on. We'll also, we'll also I'm going to show a launch at the end of the video, so, you know, that also takes a few minutes. So, uh, we uh, start by widening the fairing just a little bit at, at the top so it actually lines up with the, the width of the block B, and then we can start moving it down. So, the um, block, block, block A is kind of tricky shape. So, you want it to be, you want a little bit shorter than block B angling downwards, maybe like three quarters size. And then you want it maybe a little more than that, maybe like five sixths. And then you want to have it go straight down a little bit. And then you want it to angle like quite a bit outwards. Like you see I could do, it's it's kind of a tricky shape to do, but it's like kind of like angling a little bit straight down and then angling a lot at the bottom. So you can see what I did. That is, that is block A and you want it to be around uh, one and a half to one and a third time, one and a third to one and a half times bigger than block B. So, you know, you know block V, uh, it, block B is as big as compared to block V than block A is compared to block. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Do I make sense, guys? I don't know. Uh, I probably don't. <laughs> so, time for the bottom stage, which has 30 engines. <laughs> Soviets, man. Kind of crazy. So, I'm going to be uh, moving the fairing uh, quite a bit down. Um, just because uh, what you want to do is you want to have another fairing and you want to, because no engine plate is big enough, I'm just going to have a fairing and widen it out and that's going to be basically where we put all our engines uh, or else it'll be a big hole in the bottom and we don't want that. So I'm just going to lower it down a little bit just out of it, out of the actual uh, skirt itself, I guess would be what it's called, or the fairing, the main fairing, because it'll you can get kind of stuff where it says, oh, fairing can't collide with other things so you can't build the fairing. Oh, by the way, this will probably be something to note. Uh, I, I really should have talked about this in a little earlier in the in the tutorial. Alt plus left click is how you close the fairing without putting anything below it. Alt, left click. Alt, 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 left click to do that. Okay, hold on alt and then hit left click. Important. If you want to know how to do that, if you don't know how to, like that was probably the most, uh, on my uh, Starship tutorial, like how to make a Starship, that was the most commented comment was how do I close the fairing at the bottom, you know? Alt, left click. That. All right, cool. So now we're gonna do um, three sets of eight. So the way the bottom stage works is there are a total of 30 engines. There are 24 engines on the outer ring and then there are eight and en six engines on the inner ring. So I'm just gonna do a little octagonal strut um, and then eight times and then you put, move it to the edge and then do another one with eight times, move it to the edge and kind of reposition it and then do it a third time to get to the 24 engines of the outer ring. We're also going to be moving those engines up a little. It could be a little bit hard, difficult to grab that, by the way. Uh, we're going to be moving them up a little bit because the, uh, the Soviets, they really like to put their engines, um, like they actually they really just wanted the bell to extend out like uh, of, the, of the actual uh, rocket itself. 
So now we are going to uh, get the, the last Vaughn and we're going to move it out to the outer ring and move it in up to, uh, to where it's supposed to be. Epic! Epic, epic, epic. These engines really do take a long time to do it. It's kind of annoying how long it takes to do these outer engines, but hey ho, I build so many end ones now. <laughs> like, let me think. One, I've built one, two, three, four. This would be my fifth unique end one. Like, I've rebuilt in my whole KSP career, and then I am just moving it up just, just so the bell is extending. A lot of end ones. A lot of end ones. Although I've built, I've built like, and one is probably the craft I've built the most times. I've built a Saturn V, like, probably only twice? Twice. Huh. This is interesting. I've not even thought about this before. Maybe the boot, I may be ran a few times. Okay, off topic. Wow, I get distracted easily. Um, <laughs> so, now we're gonna get these six engines, um, these six engine cluster, which is, they have to be kind of fairly clustered towards the middle. And then they, those bells extend, they, those engines are extended a little bit lower down than the, uh, than the, uh, than the 24 on the outer ring. I'm using Reliance, uh, for my bottom stage. Probably the best engine. Most people, I think, generally use Reliance. You could use Swivels, but they don't really have enough thrust. Uh, and they don't have great ISP at sea level. You could use Vectors, but those are way overpowered. Uh, so you don't do whatever you want, but I use Reliance. And because you use Reliance, this is an important note, um, Reliance cannot gimbal, so you have no way of controlling the vehicle. Um, during the first stage burn. So make sure you put some RCS thrusters. I use Werner engines. Make sure you put some Werner engines on the um, bottom and top of the rocket. Um, I, I put them, I forgot to film it, but I put them, uh, I, I find that if you attach the Werners to the fairings, they work a little better. I feel like sometimes when you attach them to the fuel tank, they just don't work. So if anyone knows why that happens, uh, let me know. But um, attaching the fairings at the bottom of the bottom stage, I obviously put some on, and then I put some out the uh, right between the the main fairing and block V. I put some more in that. That you were able to control the thing acceptably. So, um, just final few things. We're actually getting close to the end of construction. Just got to do some more detailed work. So, just going to put the I beams on for uh, the connection between block B and block A, and then we are going to be doing the grid fins because yes, SpaceX was not the first one to do grid fins. These Soviets were. Uh, so they have grid fins at the bottom for stability reasons, so not really for the same reason as uh, SpaceX, but you know, I mean, I guess it is for, well, they're aerodynamic con kind of control basically. So we're going to be doing I-beams for the grid fins. I am going to actually speed the footage up here in about a minute, um, just because uh, the grid fins are, it's kind of tedious ish to make them so you have to make a square out of the i-beams i do show this the most of the square construction just uh, if you want to see how i'm doing that so basically just putting it at the middle there and then uh, moving it out and then moving it uh, away from each other and make sure they're equal distance so they don't look weird and offsetter uh, which i hopefully did right and then uh yeah um, i just used uh, struts to connect the middle of the grid fins to make the actual fin structure itself um because you know why not and i strut uh, struts don't generate any drag and those i-beams do so um, you know, you're getting a little bit of efficiency, but this thing is overbuilt, pro as you could probably guess, to go to the MUN. You know, it requires a rocket like one-tenth that size to actually go to the MUN. Um, so, I mean, and so here I'm going into the time-lapse. Um, it's going to go time-lapse for about 30 seconds here. Because I'm really just fiddling around with it, and it's probably, probably kind of an, you know, this is already a long video. Way too long. N1's a complicated craft. N1 is probably one of the most complicated craft to make in KSP, uh, recreations to do. It is not, you know, I wouldn't say it's the hardest one. Um, like the Mars rovers are pretty hard, but it is, it is, it is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of parts. Like the N1 is a very complicated rocket. There's like six stages to it, five stages. <coughs> uh, and the lander and the Soyuz and there, it's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. There I am, I'm just adding the solar panels. I finally remember to the Soyuz. And uh, we are basically in the just the housekeeping steps um, before we are ready to, to launch. So after group one to get the uh, launch tower uh, decoupled and uh, that's just get the launch escape system to activate and then decouple the docking port. And then the last step is to set up the stage and check your stage and oh my yeah everyone check your stage and so um, step one is to check the staging. Uh, and then step two is to drain the fuel appropriately um, to get the thing. You can you can drain fuel really however you'd like. You can look at how I'm doing it and follow me if you if you want. 
Um, I just drained him to a way I thought would be good. If you look at the Delta V, I just, I, I did, I did what I did, um, for reasons. Um, Block V has too much Delta V. Um, I end up ditching that with quite a bit of fuel, and I end up ditching Block G with quite a bit of fuel, and I end up ditching Block uh, V with quite a bit of fuel. Uh, no, not Block, yeah, Block V, Block G, and Block D all get ditched with quite a bit of fuel. Awkward swallow. Um, Andy Soyuz also gets ditched with quite a bit of fuel. So, um, yeah, long story short, quite a bit of fuel gets ditched. Um, so, you know, you can, you can set up the fuel, uh, you know, however you like, but you can look what I'm doing if you want. And, you know, you could have a few different fuel tanks set up or a different whatever set up. And quick note, by the way, um, craft files are normally members only. Um, I know, right? Hashtag capitalism. But I am going to make... The, uh, I'm gonna make this craft file and all my tutorial craft files public for everyone. So, sorry, members, you know, your perk, perk's gone for these. Um, but I just feel like everyone should have access to these craft files. But, you know, it, you know, it'd be, it'd be kind of, man, to not, to not give you guys tutorials. Like, it's literally a tutorial. So, um, I don't know. Sorry, members. <laughs> also, to, to the members who got these, I really shouldn't have done this. Um, uh, there's one tier by membership because you know we're just doing the fuel thing, so I'm kind of talking about off-topic stuff here for a second. Um, and make sure you turn off staging for the fairings. That's important, by the way. Very important. And then you get the fairings and stuff worked out. So, to all the members, second and third tier members, um, where I, you're supposed to get early access to my videos. Sorry, that's like you've gotten like two-hour early access to the videos that I have given you early access to. By the way, we're gonna cross fade to the launch here very soon because we're done. Epic. Awesome. Um, yeah. Sorry. I really shouldn't have made that a perk. I'll try to, but I, I, I never finish my videos when I think I will. I don't know. No one, no one ever believed my timelines. Don't do that. If I ever give you a timeline, add like a day. <laughs> so uh, let's talk through the launch quickly, and then that'll be the end of the video after that. So the launch, RCS on. Make sure you have those uh, Werner engines on. The rocket, and then we're just going to pitch pitch it over um, like, like so. Uh, you probably want to go a little bit steeper for an ascent profile. What I found happened is after I get to a certain point, you can see I am full to the right like I am uh, it is just turning the way it wants to turn right now so you know if you want a little bit shout a little bit steeper of an ascent profile so that doesn't happen you can but there goes block A fully depleted now we can go and fire up a block B which has quite a bit of thrust to weight ratio uh, as we cross around 20 kilometers I did fly a little shallow so um no I'm just just a demonstration I'm only going to do the launch I'm not going to actually do the entire mission because this video is way way too long uh if you want to you know you can download the craft file and fly it yourself because it's about the build i'm just kind of demonstrating that the thing you know it works right you're not scammed one's well, not scammed this is not this is not shadow zone no shadow zone he's the he's um hazardous he's the guy who faked the, the videos <laughs> um so there goes the um the fairing and the uh launch escape system and that is uh basically um the entire launch completed did a little backflip oh, that was not supposed to happen but hey it did and then we can fire up the engines one final time here in just a second to get ourselves circularized around the curve in with the block B. And that's going to get to the end of the video. So I'd like to thank you for watching. See next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.